Stop me if you've heard this before, but let's welcome a new addition to the platform, on-chain analytics. This is something else that was very highly requested, and once again, we delivered. If you're unsure of how to navigate to this part of the platform, simply go to the insights and click on-chain from the drop-down menu. Once you're here, you're able to focus on the big three, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and stable coins. I'd say the big two for me in regards to Bitcoin would be the exchange's net flow as well as the minor net flow, as they're going to have similar effects on how the market moves. We have a bunch of Bitcoin moving to the exchanges, either from miners or from everyday investors. That's not going to really be that great of a sign because there's going to be a lot more sell pressure, which means lower prices. Now, if I say that there's going to be a lot more outflow from exchanges and that minor net flow is relatively low, then this is actually quite bullish for prices. Prices are going to stabilize or even increase, being that there is not as much sell pressure at all. Also, we provide you the NVT ratio as well as the stock to flow ratio for Bitcoin. If I move over to Ethereum, exchanges net flow, of course, will be important as well, being it's similar to Bitcoin in terms of if there's a lot of Ethereum moving on to exchanges, not really so good. If there's a lot of Ethereum moving away from exchanges, pretty good. It means we have some hodlers or believers in returns investment. Now, if I move over to transaction fee, of course, it's going to be very important to monitor gas fees whenever NFTs start popping, whenever DeFi starts popping. Obviously, the network gets very congested. So we want to see where those transaction fees are because it also gives us a clue of how much the network is really being utilized. If I take a look a little further down, we have new addresses. We always want to see that on the incline as that's showing more and more new members to the crypto family and adoptions always going to be welcome. Lastly, we have daily average block size. So that's just showing you the output of the network and how it's really moving. And lastly, we have stable coins. So for this, once again, we want to see the exchange net flow. If there's a big inflow of stable coins, that's not really too good, meaning that everyone's moving to a defensive position. So everyone's predicting that prices are going to fall across assets. So we're selling out of our Bitcoin. We're selling out of our Ethereum, whatever other projects you're investing in, and we're moving it over to stable coins. Now, similarly for exchange outflow, if you're getting out of stable coins and actually into Bitcoin, into Ethereum, that means we're quite bullish on the price and we think those are going to be moving up. So the lower the amount of people holding stable coins, the better it is for the market because it's actually being placed into investments. The higher the stable coin concentration, the lower amount of money is available into the assets. So obviously prices will fall. So that stable coin to supply ratio would definitely be important there. Remember, stable coins do have a big impact on how the market moves. And that's also how the Fed keeps putting money into the cryptocurrency markets. If you just follow USDT, which is Tether, or USDC, which is US dollar coin, you can just see the amount of money, whether you follow whale alerts on Twitter, of how much money is being minted and created on those two stable coin platforms. So stable coins, Bitcoin, Ethereum, the three big pillars on how the market moves.